Yeah, well, uh, so I'm Sammy. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, uh, I work as a software engineer. So I've worked at a few different types of companies, but right now I'm a software engineer at a startup. So a smaller company with only about 30 other engineers. Um, and so I think the first question here is uh, like on a day-to-day, -day, what do I do? So on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I'm coding. So I'm on my laptop most of the time and I am... Um, building different products so a lot of like the different software like you know websites sort of things that you guys use i'm building those sorts of things uh for my company which specifically is in the accounting space so we build software for accounting companies um and um but the education necessary so typically uh what typically most people will have a bachelor's degree um before they enter into software. So uh, if you are able to go to college and study computer science, and then when you graduate, um, you can get a job as a software engineer, although it's not necessary. There are definitely maybe like 20% of people don't have that, but it's a lot harder if you don't have it um, because you have to uh, end up um, studying on your own or going through other types of alternate ways to learn. Um, but the, the most typical path is to get a bachelor's degree in computer science. And um, let's see here. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I hope you don't yeah. mind, but um, I, I told them what college you went to. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I did, I did, I graduated from Harvard with computer science uh, and philosophy. And so a lot of what I learned there uh, translated to the job too. But really, um, I think software is really a cool field too, because it doesn't really matter as much where you go, as long as you have like some of the skills, um, which leads to some of these other questions. Other why, screen here. Why do I love my job? Yeah. So why do I love my job? Uh, I, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with this and say so. So a few of the reasons I really love my job. One of them is just the flexibility, and um, it's a, it's a really really awesome job. So it I'm not getting overworked, which is nice. Um, I'm working maybe like 30, 30 to forty hours a week which is like a really reasonable amount. It's very flexible, the job, so I can work from anywhere uh, as long as I have a Wi-Fi connection. And then the quality of work is really fun too. It's actually kind of fun um, to learn new things. I like really like to learn new things. So I get to go on new projects where I'm learning to build a new machine learning model um, to do something cool at, at, at my job or to like learn a new programming language or a new programming paradigm in order to, uh, build a different type of website. So I really enjoy the type of work. And it's kind of like um, playing with puzzles in a, in a way. Um, and I've always kind of liked that sort of thing. And, uh, but it is very time consuming. I think, yeah, it is definitely time consuming, but they, I mean, and also the third thing I really like is also just, yeah, it pays really well. <laughs> like, I'll be frank about this too, because part of what we're talking about here is, is trying to look at like really transparently evaluating the different jobs that are available and then looking at the, the pros and cons. And a lot of people don't like to talk about the pay aspect of it when they're talking about their jobs. But since we're in this sort of meeting, I'll be honest about that, that that is definitely a big factor in it as well. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, so the, the third question is, what parts do I not like about my job? And, you know, I'm sure I know you love it and that's great, but there's got to yeah. be some things that are not that great. Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons I wouldn't, so uh, how do I put this? I've been thinking about how to say this to you guys too, but uh, I'm thinking if you're, if I'm thinking really long-term, so maybe like 20 or 30 years, what does this sort of career lead to? Um, I think there are two different, there's two different outcomes. So one of them is I continue to be a software engineer. Uh, I get bumped up to like senior level engineer. And then at some point I keep contributing. They call it an individual contributor if you're the one actually building stuff versus being a manager or something like that. So one track is to continue to be an engineer basically your whole career. Um, the other track is to start jumping into management and then starting to manage people, doing less engineering yourself, and then just kind of moving up the ranks in a corporate setting in that way. Um, so staying at the, a company and continuing to do this sort of job, it's either one of those two tracks uh, is the way that I see it. Even if I switch different companies, um, and that, I think those are like both really great lifestyles, but it's just not necessarily for me at this point in terms of, um, I'm still young. I have a lot I want to do. 
uh, and a lot of different places that I want to be able to make change in. And so with software engineering, you can make a lot of really cool change if you're building products that have like really important societal functions. Uh, but at the same time, like my, my contributions, I feel like are limited to just like uh, more like building technology for a, a really specific situation. And if, if I do one day want to like make larger sh social changes, then I feel like I'll have to do a different sort of career path in order to do that. Unless I like start my own company and then like build it out to do something like that and build out a product. But outside of that, um, I think if I do want to do more like reading and writing, I'll have to go a different path. Um, yeah. And I also do, I love reading and writing and uh, yeah, I don't really get to do too much of that these days. So. All yeah. right. Okay. So number four was how did I get to where I am now? I know you, you answered that a little bit before. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you also talked about hustling in your free time. So <laughs> tell us. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think it does take a lot of work. I mean, it's a really nice job once you can get to this point, but to get to the point, it takes a lot of work um, in terms of just like when I was younger too, like making sure that I stay on top of my work uh, in, in classes and then to um, also just to like put in the time and effort I honestly don't think that this is like that difficult of a job or a thing to do, except for the fact that it takes a lot more time than people are willing to put in, in normally. So, I mean, the, the, the level of math that you need is probably around algebra one or two um, for most of software engineering work, which um, you can get to pretty early on um, in, in life. But like what, what is difficult about it is that there's just so many extra like pieces that you have to spend time working through yourself um, that aren't necessarily like difficult math or difficult science or anything like that, but just time consuming, like trial and error so that you can learn uh, in order to get to the point where you're able to like, pass the interviews to get these jobs or be in a place where you can actually function on the jobs. Um, and so in my free time, I would um, try to learn that sort of stuff. Actually, when I was in college, I never really did beforehand. But once I was a junior in college, I had to study for the interviews. Uh, that's something you got to do. And then to uh, figure out what are they going to ask for and then how to like actually uh, answer them correctly. A lot of the stuff you'll actually learn on the job, too. So once you're able to just get past that interview um, while you're like maybe a sophomore, junior in college, try to get an internship. And then from there, you can jump into a full time job. And then once you get your first full time job in the field, um, you learn a lot of stuff while you're on the job and then from there you can really jump to whatever you want so it, it's much much easier to get whatever kind of second job you want as long as you're able to like, kind of get your foot in the door that first time all right um next question is for the kids especially what are mm -hmm. the talents slash habits slash characteristics mm -hmm. that you should develop at a young age uh so our kids are from sixth grade to 12th grade uh yeah to be successful at your job yeah sixth grade to 12th grade I think one thing that is consistent throughout all of this is just time management. So if you're able to learn to manage your time well, it'll help you in so many aspects of your life, but also in getting to become a software engineer and then also succeeding on the job once you do become a software engineer. Uh, if this is the sort of career path that you want. Um, a lot of the work can at times be a, a, a bit less structured too. So if you're able to um, manage your time on your own to do that, that's gonna be super, super helpful. Another piece that I did allude to earlier is also um, being, I mean, you don't really have to be great at uh, like math and or science or anything like that, but being generally like trying your best in math, science, reading, writing, and um, just generally trying to learn. Uh, I think that that helps a lot too in the long run. So at the, my advice to, to people in like sixth grade to like, in middle school and high school would mostly just be, um, yeah, continue to be curious, continue to uh, manage your time well, and then to uh, stay on top of classes and tr try your best in those classes. And, and also just to not give up on it. Um, I do think that once you kind of realize how much work it is at the beginning, you might, it's, it's a bit intimidating, but if you can kind of just believe that you'll be able to do it uh, and then to keep asking for help, uh, which I had to do so, so often. I think it saves a lot of time to be able to ask someone who's already done it for help. Um, 
asking for help, then you'd be able to just continue to go through it. Yeah. And then get to the, get to a point where you're able to actually achieve, you know, this sort of job in, at, at some point. Mm-hmm. Great. And then last question was, if you could be personal, just honest, honest, personal goals, do I see this job as a stepping stone or as a lifelong career? And what are your future dreams? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, a little bit of both. I think I'll always be coding. I think the world is moving towards a place where like everyone needs to know a little bit of coding. Uh, and by knowing how to code, it'll help you in really any field, whether or not I stay in software or not. Uh, I don't know if I, I mentioned the two tracks earlier. I don't think that I'm going to stay in a role where I'm coding, you know, uh, as like a full career goal. So maybe like 10 to 20 years from now, that's very likely not what I want to do. Um, and nor do I necessarily want to be a manager. I think, uh, yeah. So, but at, uh, I do, I do like the idea of, you know, once you're, once you have this experience, once you have the skills, you can always go back to it. So, I mean, this will kind of always be a fallback for me too. Like if all else fails, I can always get a job as a software engineer. And I know that just because the demand for software engineers is really, really high and it's continuing to still grow. Um, so there's the idea of having that kind of job security in the back of my head is nice. And it gives me the ability to explore and try other things. So I do think that over the next like five, 10 years, I'm going to explore, try different paths um, related, maybe like tangentially related to the software field, but not necessarily as a software engineer and then see how that goes. Um, and then if, if those things don't end up working out the way that I want them to, then I can always come back and, and continue to do this. So uh, a bit of a mixed answer, but that's what I would say to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So scholars, it's already 835 and our meeting is over officially at 830. So you guys are free to go unless Sam, Sammy, do you have like 10 minutes to answer? Yeah, any questions I'll be here to answer questions. Okay. Apologies again for, for, uh, for the lateness with this and making you all wait. All right. That's, that's cool. We're, we're good. Uh, I'm going to un, unpin you and then, um, I think you guys could share, or you, you guys do your own screen thing. So, okay, any, mm -hmm. you guys that need to go, go ahead, good night. Thank you guys for being here. And anyone that wants to stay and ask questions, please um, ask. I got a question. All right, Terrell. All right, so um, as a software engineer, can you yeah. like create like video games? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, you, you definitely can create video games. And I have friends who work at uh, in similar roles at EA or at the different uh, video game companies making video games and doing that too. Uh, and it's the same kind of role. It's just, yeah, you'd be doing it at a video game company making the video games. Other questions? Shalom? I guess in terms of like being a software engineer, mm -hmm. um, how did... Like, well, around, around what age did you, like, know, like, you, I know you're saying, like, yeah. you know, doing it for long term, but, like, when did you know, like, that's something that you wanted to do? And stuff like yeah. That. It does involve coding and make mm -hmm. coding to just so, different. Yeah, that's a great question. So I didn't even, I didn't start coding until I got to college. So you guys are all way ahead of me if you decide to do it now. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about coding or I didn't even know about what it means to be a software engineer. And I think, um, maybe it was my sophomore year of college where I said, Hey, this would be a really cool career path. Like I talked to someone who's doing it. Like it just seemed like a really nice lifestyle. Like it sounded really cool to be able to build things like that. And then also like the financially, the money was really nice. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's super cool. Maybe I'll try to do this. And then from there, I just like worked really hard, um, to try, try, try to do like do well in my classes and then to do well in the interviews. Those are really the things. Yeah. I got another question. Right. Yeah. So um, as a as a software engineer, like, could you change the inner workings of a computer by going on the apps and like go to the terminal and like change some stuff up? Yeah, that's a good question too, man. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm I've learned like to to use the terminal pretty well these days. Although in school you actually don't learn that too too much, but. Once I got on the job, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of free time and they don't really like check what you're doing all that much. Um, they just kind of, you just kind of do like projects and, and build things. So I've had a lot of time 
to get really familiar with the terminal and to like uh, mess around with different permissions. So I, I know how to do that stuff a lot better now than I used to. I have no idea what you're talking about, Terrell. <laughs> this is all <laughs> above my head. So I appreciate the question. Yeah, I like I like the coding stuff. I was trying to actually get into coding, but like the language and stuff was like mm -hmm. really for me and like I can't really find yeah. a good source of information on it right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I think it's like so easy to get discouraged just because of how hard it all seems and how much time it takes to, you know, but I, most of the time I use Google just to figure things out. So I'll Google, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then over time, if you Google enough times, you, you kind of learn it. And then you can kind of like figure out what's going on. But it, it took me like so many years, even now at this point, um, I'm using Google just about every single day, learning something new every day. Yeah. And Cynthia. Um, for like anybody who wants to be a software engineer or like just to learn how to code, what would be um, some type of software or apps that you would use just to get the basic understanding of code? Yeah. So there are ways to do it on your own and like self-study with like uh, resources online. But I've always found that so hard. Like I can never keep up with like what they're doing. So. So I think the best way to do it is just to take a class. So if your high school has a class or if your college has a class uh, that teaches a like, computer science, start taking those classes and getting ready for them. Those are going to be hard classes just because they take a lot of time. But if you go into it knowing it'll be difficult and then going in and asking for, I went to office hours every single week. So in college, when you get to college and start taking classes, uh, they have like help sessions called office hours where you go in and you can ask questions to the professor to different like teaching assistants, like older people who've already taken the class, I'd go there like five days a week in order to get my homework done and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know. Some people were like, I don't know. Some people didn't go because uh, they were scared to go or they just didn't want to ask for help. But I, I feel like it's such a good, easy way. You know, it's kind of a hack. It's like you, you can go in and uh, like learn one-on-one -on -one with these people and get your questions answered. And that's kind of how I was able to get through all that in college. So I'd say sign up for the classes. Uh, if you want, you can Google a little bit to like see what's out there, but, uh, and then just like ask questions. So if you're curious about how something works, like, oh, how does this work? You can Google it, ask someone who might know. Um, yeah. How long did it take you for you to like start getting it just so that the work you do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think like a few years at least. So and, and, yeah, it takes a while, but, um, yeah, I think I, I and even now I, there's still so much that I have to learn, um, and there's still so much where I'm like, oh, I don't really know exactly how this works, but I do know like the big picture at this point of a lot of things. So if I, I think one one of the best skills is knowing how to ask good questions. <laughs> so uh, because I've known it for long enough, I know I kind of have I'm at a place where I can ask the right questions and get answers that I need to when I need to. Um, so that's what really helps me on the job too. But it, it did take me maybe like a couple years of uh, working. Like I did a lot of internships in the summers as well. Uh, and those really helped me to get on the job experience. In college, if you, for, uh, if you study computer science in colleges, they'll teach you a lot of the like um, theory or the basics that don't, that maybe will help you a little bit. Uh, they'll help you on the job. Uh, but they don't actually teach you exactly like how to build an app or something like that. Um, you have to kind of learn that on the job itself. In school, they'll teach you like the background and, and like the fundamentals in order to get you to the point where you can think about that. Um, I don't know, this, this is more towards like the startup side. Um, mm -hmm. What is it like wor working like for a startup and like you did say you're getting good money. So like, like, like you say there's 30 other people working with you. What yeah, is that, is that just in the um, the software department or is like other employees and stuff like that. Like, what is that like? I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, when the 30 number is only for in the software department, that's a good question. Um, startups versus big companies are, are pretty different. So uh, I think big companies. So I also did work at a bigger company. I'm, I worked at Microsoft for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when I was at like a big company like Microsoft, um, it's just a lot more like corporate i don't know and by that what i mean is it uh things move a lot slower so you can't 
do as many different things. And it takes a lot longer for like, if I want to do a new project, I have to ask like six different people and then they have to ask their boss and they have to ask their boss and it takes like maybe two months to get permission to do anything. Uh, also, uh, for me, I realized that uh, they kind of stick you on one small part of like one product of another, you know, it's like one small piece that you're always working on and you don't really get to see a lot of different aspects. Whereas in a startup, I can work on so many different things. I can work on the back end. I can work on the front end work on the infrastructure, I work on the machine learning and on the data side. So it's like, I can see the big picture of everything that's happening. Um, large company, you kind of only see what's going on in your small team. Um, also the hours, I, you actually end up working a lot more at startups um, than at large companies for the most part. Large companies, I think, are a lot more just like relaxed. There's some people who are older, um, people who have like families and just like to kind of move along. Whereas uh, startups are a lot faster paced. Uh, larger companies, you'll make more money um, generally as a rule of thumb. So like, um, yeah. So if I like, yeah, you might make about like 30% more. They bump up really fast and it caps out depending on um, how much you're like, if you're progressing and you're adding stuff, but uh, big companies, they move you along and they try to keep you uh, there. So they have these like different schemes to keep you around by paying you a little bit more, but, um, yeah, they're called, it's called like golden handcuffs. So after a certain number of years, you, uh, get more money. So you only get money if you stay after a year, but then before your year is up in like six months, they'll say, if you stay for another two years, we'll give you this much money. And so then, Oh, I'll just wait until the two years is up before that ends. They'll give you a little more. So a lot of people end up staying for like their whole life. Um, yeah. And then they, but I mean, it's a really nice job. They, they'll take care of you. Um, you'll have more than enough money and, and, and you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, it's a really good deal. Uh, but it's just two different types of lifestyles. I think I could see myself later in life when I have a family going to a big company like that. Hmm. But, um, at this point I'm, I'm young. I want to learn as much as I can. I want to learn, uh, work on a lot of different projects that I find interesting, um, and have a little bit more ownership over, the entire process. So that's why I chose to go to a startup and I've been at the startup for at least a couple of years. We sell, we sell like software to other businesses. So that's why most people don't actually hear about it. Uh, it's kind of in the background sort of thing, but uh, it's in the accounting space. So uh, I'm like building some software that helps to uh, automate uh, aspects of accounting. Thank you so much Sammy, for, for your honesty. And uh, yeah, just, yeah, I hope that makes sense. You can tell like, these are smart kids. Like they, they have good questions because they, they know their. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You guys have asked like awesome questions. <laughs> I start one more. One. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sammy, you're never leaving. <laughs> All right. Shalom and then Terrell. Yeah. Actually, Terrell can go first. Since I asked two in a row. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, um, being a software engineer, how does it affect your lifestyle? Yeah. Um, it gives me a lot of flexibility. So it allows me to, um, you know, save money for the future. That's like one thing that's really important that I wanted to be able to do is, is I want to put some money away every single month with my paycheck. So I'm able to do that now. I'm also able to like live pretty comfortably where I can, um, you know, I don't have to worry about eating out maybe like twice a week. I can like go out to dinner. I, I have a girlfriend, so I'll take her out and stuff. It's kind of nice. <laughs> and uh like in terms of lifestyle i'm able to live like pretty comfortably while still saving a significant amount of money and planning for my future so i think that uh, being a software engineer has helped me to be able to do that by the way he he teaches sunday school at my church <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i guess my question is and like right now you're working with accounting and you're using that's like where you're mm -hmm. you know, i don't know if I don't know if your coding would change because you're specifically working around accounting, but do you ever see yourself changing? Like, like Terrell was saying, video games, like does you going to video games change your coding style or pattern or something like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, but a lot of the basics, actually all of the fundamentals are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So um, like the stuff you learn in school about how to code, that's all going to be the same, but like the specifics are going to, are going to change for sure. So you maybe you've heard of, like a programming language called Python. It's a very popular one, but 
Yeah, yeah. You guys have heard of it? That's the one that I use every single day. So I'm like hundred, like eighty percent Python right now. Uh, maybe like twenty percent another one called JavaScript. Uh, yeah. If you you if you're building video games, there are a few different platforms that you can use to build video games. One of them is called like Unity. That's a really popular one, and I know that a lot of the games and EA games will use that sort of like engine, and they call it like a video game engine. Um, and the code for that is more like Java. So, I mean, the languages are different, but once you learn like one or two different types of languages and you'll do that while you're in school, then you can pick up a new one pretty easily. You just Google it. Like, if I don't know how to do something, I know generally how the languages work. So, oh, I, I want to know how to do this. Does this language support it? I can just Google it and then figure it out. It might take me a little bit longer uh, when I do that switch because my work will be different day to day, but um, the, the basics are about the same. Mm -hmm. all right should we should we let sammy go um thank you so we don't want to let you go and but we took up so much of your time and <laughs> no no i yeah i'm so happy to be able to do this and, and i apologize for for showing up late to this too and i appreciate I think, you guys waiting around for me yeah no, but the other secret note secret thing is he actually won the 5k if you guys read the 5k oh yeah <laughs> so if you guys yeah anyway uh, but he's a friend. <laughs> he's a friend. And, you know, I, I just love that the people that um, our scholars get to meet, like, really, you know, you, you are only like a phone call away or we they, we might be able to see you in person. Um, yeah, in definitely. I'm around. Whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys, if you guys come up with more questions, but this was so fun, Sammy, you got you were just it was so fun to hear what you do. And and sorry.